Uh, hi, uh, we have earlier discussed uh, about the solar on grid system, the solar off grid system and the solar hybrid systems. These are all very popular solar PV uh, topologies which is adopted uh, around many residential communities around the world. There is however another uh, PV application which is largely unacknowledged that is the pumping of water using solar PV panels. A major advantage of uh, pumping the water using solar uh, PV panels is they can use the solar PV panels which is generating DC integrated with the DC pump and pump the water with minimum or almost zero losses. Since we have solar DC pumps available in the market, it is very easy to integrate a solar PV panel into a solar uh, DC pump and lift the water. We are at a site of, of course, in the same site we have got the on grid and the off grid system as well. In the same site now we have a solar pumping system as well. The panels you see right behind me is a uh, monocrystalline panel. This is integrated into a pump which is in the sump below that is we have used a submersible pump. The design of the solar pump is slightly complicated if we actually go in a very academic uh, sense of the term. Uh, I will very very briefly tell the steps involved in uh, the academic calculation of the hydraulic energy required to pump the water. I will also tell you the simpler method as well. Strictly speaking if we have to uh, design a pump to lift the water we need a lot of parameter. First we need to know the total volume of water required in a day. Then we need to estimate the flow rate depending on the duration at which it is pumping. Then we need to know the velocity of the water then we need to know what is called as a Reynolds number, then we need to ret determine whether it is a turbulent flow or a laminar flow. Depending on the kind of flow we need to actually estimate the friction factor using some what is called as a Colebrook white formula. From that we get the friction factor and then we can determine the friction loss or the friction head by what is called as a Darcy Weisbach formula. Using all these we can plug into a standard uh, formula for hydraulic energy that is the density of water into acceleration due to gravity into the total dynamic head into the flow rate which gives us the, the energy the hydraulic energy or the pump capacity required to lift the given volume of water. This looks slightly complicated it, in fact it is slightly complicated determining fixture factor is a very complicated exercise one needs to actually use a computer program. The other and most simpler method is to just look into the data sheet of the pump which gives the flow rate for a given head. Using that specification in the data sheet, we can actually determine the, uh, the pump capacity. So, in this particular site for this locality where or the, this particular house, the daily requirement for this house is about 800 liters of water. This house has uh, about this actually this is my house for the given number of people here plus a large family of about 400 plus plants and about 25 trees, we require about 800 liters of water. A good design, a good design is to actually have a buffer of one day. So, we need to actually pump about 1600 liters of water per day. So, that say for example, how do we do it in a solar DC system? Say we can we can link it to the insulation that is the amount of sunlight available and say that is the amount of time we need to pump the water. So, for very conservatively I have actually taken let us pump the water for about 2 hours in a day. So, given I need to pump about 1600 liters of water for about 2 hours that is 120 minutes, my flow rate that is the rate at which I have to pump is about 13.3 liters per minute. So, my design principle is I need to be sizing my PV panel and my uh, pump to pump about 13.3 liters of water per minute. So, for that I have used uh, two panels, I have, I have used a 12 volt uh, DC uh, pump. So, this is both of them are 12 volt panels this is connected in uh, parallel each of them is uh, 50 watt. So, this 100 watt panel connected to a 100 watt pump that is the 100 watt submersible pump in my sump. So, this is connected in parallel I will show you the show you the DC pump which I have integrated there and we will also see we will also pump pump the water and check the uh, flow rate we will just go and check our pump now. So, we saw the solar panels on the roof the solar panels comes and gets into this uh, charge controller and uh, there is also an automatic uh, level controller for the pump to switch on automatically when the level falls down. 
there is also a battery since it is most likely that we will be generating excess energy because in my calculation I have only taken 2 hours of pumping but there will be sunlight for far more than 2 hours in most part of the year. So, there is also a battery given so that the energy can be stored and if required we can also pump it in the uh, night. So, but if you can observe closely both the battery and the load is actually shorted so that the uh, solar energy uh, makes the maximum contribution during the day. So, this is a DC pump as I told you the pump is inside this uh, uh, sump you can see here there is a there is a DC pump of 100 uh, watts this is connected to our charge controller. If you can observe closely the MCB is always in the on position and that is connected to a sensor and a level controller. So, whenever the water level falls down the water pumps automatically. Now, since the uh, tank is already full it is not pumping automatically. So, for the purpose of the video we will now switch it on manually and see the water flow. So, I will manually uh, switch on the pump now. So, here I go. So, now the water is being uh, pumped it is flowing through this uh, pipe here. For the purpose of measurement I have a digital uh, flow meter here. If you can come close by you will be able to take a look. Now, uh, as I told you in my calculation we need to be pumping at the rate of 13.3 uh, liters per minute. Now, this is the flow rate the one which you are seeing here. Now, it is showing 15.8 now it is gone to 15.7, 15.9. This is the rate at which the water is flowing in this uh, in this pipe. So, this is this is my flow rate. So, if I can pump it at this rate for about uh, 2 hours I will be able to fill up my tank to a capacity of 1600 liters. You can also see here I am also measuring the temperature of the water. If you can uh, recollect I spoke something about the Reynolds number. For calculation of Reynolds number we need to know the kinematic viscosity of uh, water for that the temperature is important. So, it is just for an academic exercise that is all. So, now I will show you today uh, today is 22nd of July it is quite cloudy and uh, gloomy here there is hardly any sunshine uh, and uh, the insulation now that is the the insulation now the solar uh, irradiance available now is about 148 watt per meter square it is actually really really low. So, this is one of the time of the year where the actually the irradiance is is very less. So, you, you can see here this is my irradiance meter it is about 145, 150 watt per meter square even at this uh, irradiance we are able to pump the water at about uh, 15.816 liters per minute. So, the idea of showing this data is um, we need to be factoring the worst case scenario while designing the solar pumps because water is very essential you know if the if the pump does not work for a day or two then there will be no water in the in the building. So, we need to factor in the worst case uh, scenario. So, that is why I am showing you even at very low irradiance we are able to meet our actual demand of water. You can actually come close by see now um, the, the, the irradiance is even dropped now. Now, it is about 128-123 watt per meter square our temperature now is roughly about 25.9. So, at this uh, this is my ambient temperature my water temperature is roughly about 26 degree centigrade and I am able to achieve my flow rate of 15, uh, 15 liters per uh, minute. So, this is about pumping the water from my uh, sump to the overhead tank. I also have another uh, pumping mechanism here. This is uh, this is my uh, solar irrigation pump. Uh, this is my solar irrigation pump which is a very small 12 volt uh, pump. It is connected to a 40 watt uh, polycrystalline panel. I have connected that to a 12 volt uh, DC DC pump here and the mechanism is the same. Uh, I have a charge controller and a uh, and a battery. Uh, the submersible pump what we saw down is almost noiseless because it is under water. This is however, uh, a more conventional uh, 
pump uh, i will switch this on also and show you how we use this uh, water so this actually this is a tank right behind uh, be, behind this there's a tank and we have a, a solar panel connected to this uh, battery and there's a charge controller and there is a pump now if i switch this on now the pump is on so i this now this water so as i told you we have a pretty large family of about 400 plus plants and about 25 trees so again we use this uh, solar pump to actually irrigate all our uh, plants and trees so this water now what you are seeing is being pumped through a solar pump connected to the overhead tank so this is about the solar pumping so just another uh, quick quick point uh, so you saw the uh, the complete uh, solar pumping setup the rooftop actually also harvests the rain water the water which falls on the roof and including on the solar panels you saw the gutters which are actually connected on the other side of the solar panels that water gets conveyed into a filtration unit the water gets filtered and gets stored in the sump in the same sump we have a uh, dc pump which is pumping the water to the overhead tank now it is the rooftop which is giving the water for our daily consumption and it is the same rooftop which is also actually giving the energy for us to pump this water from the sump to the overhead tank actually now it is the solar panels actually which is giving both the rain rather the water as well as the energy for our water requirements thank you